Hey folks, Jen or Murgriffin here. Taking a look tonight at the same thing probably everybody else has looked at over the past week or so. The amp tank. In short and tall configurations. Um, I've really been enjoying it, especially with the HH357. Because I've been pretty much living on cardo tanks. And as much as I love Cardo tanks, for really strong juices, they're great. But there's some subtler flavors that you put them in a Cardo tank and it's like, what juice is this? So basically that's what I've been using these for. Like glazed donut from Hot Vapes, which I got a long time ago and put in a Cardo and I'm like, I can't even taste this. What is this? Um, is great in here. The same thing with uh, Chois Brillig from uh, Alice in Vapeland. I didn't really get it before I tried it in an atomizer. And I hate dripping. So, and I was always a big proponent of the uh, the GGTS with the UFS and the, the original AVS, which was, you know, the first, the original um, atomizer tank. But they were designed to only work on the GG mods. Um, they're fairly expensive, a bit more than the amp tank is. Um, the UFS also allows airflow control, but that's as long as you have the juice flow control, you're okay. And that's built into these. So um, let's just take a dive and see what pieces come with it and how you put them together. Let's go ahead and dig into the amp tank. Comes in a box marked with your type of finish, avid vapor, some details around it, made in the USA, your color and your serial number. Three main parts of the tank. And it, the bottom cap, which extends the 510 connection it is stamped with your with AV for avid vapor and the serial number of your unit. This is the atomizer connector and the juice flow control. There's also a top cap, which I just had in my hand, and the tube. Now the process is the same whether you use the short atomizer that initially comes with it, which would work in the three mil tank, or if you put the atomizer extender that comes with the kit or you can purchase separately on the short atomizer to make it longer, which would let you use the five mil tank. Or you can do what I did and buy an HH357 long barrel, which gets you to the same length and lets you use the five mil quartz tank. Now everything we're gonna go through in the video works exactly the same, whether you're using the short tank or the long tank. The only difference is how long the atomizer is and how much juice you have in the tank. Everything about the function of the top cap and the bottom cap and the atomizer connector and where the juice flows through is actually the same. So let's go with the smaller tank so it's easier to see. Now, one thing that comes separate is this little air hole finger tool. It's got a really long, weird name. It's basically a drill bit that it's not set to go in a drill, but for you to use with your fingers. Basically, you just push it into the brass connector and twist and it will drill out the hole of your atomizers a little thicker. Now it worked great on this one. I found with the HH357 that it seemed to already have bigger air holes so you may not need to do this with all of them. I did have some dry, not feeding too well even when I had it wide open issues until I used that. And now this atomizer is feeding great and it's not all the way open. so. I am going to put a tank filler on here um, just to ease that sharp edge of the atomizer past the o-ring. They do suggest that you uh, <clears throat> lube it up a little bit because you want the atomizer to be able to freely turn within the tank. And then you just sort of twist and put your top cap on. Okay, I've got it past that edge, so I'm going to go ahead and take my tank filler out. Now for filling and setup purposes, you want the top of your atomizer to be flush with the top cap, no matter what tank and length of atomizer and extender you're using. And you put the top on. 
Now these are kind of loose and so is the top cap. Not that they're going to fall off, but they do move rather easily. They hold a nice seal, um, but you have to be careful when you're extending the atomizer and making more space between the bottom of the atomizer and the bottom cap to let more juice flow that you're not letting the glass tank come away from either the top or those bottom o-rings that are you know keeping the juice from going everywhere now to put it together you push down a little bit gently and then turn the bottom cap which is basically screwing the 510 connector of the atomizer into the 510 connector inside the tank. Now you can see right now I don't have it screwed all the way in. So there's two things. There's space between the bottom of that atomizer and the atomizer connector where the juice can go in. And a little bit of the atomizer was sticking out the top. So it's only flush kind of when it's tight and sealed. And as you turn it clockwise, you'll see that gap go away. So you're just left with the little kind of crenellations that it's that are in the 510 connector to allow airflow and it's very small so that would obviously be not a lot of juice flow and the atomizer is flush on the top and if you try to turn it anymore the atomizer will actually turn in the tank with the bottom cap piece so what I do to adjust it is I take it off my mod, I turn it upside down, I kind of hold the top bottom, the, the top cap and the atomizer to keep them from separating to cause a leak. But as you can see, if you turn that bottom cap, the atomizer will kind of free spin in the tank, which is what you want to be able to do. So to adjust it so I can actually unscrew it a little bit and get more space on the bottom there, is I hold it with the drip tip. But see, as I'm doing that, you can see the bottom of the tank come away from the bottom cap and you kind of have to push them together. Now, that's okay now because I don't have any liquid in it. When you have liquid in it and you're doing that, you got to really be careful. But you'll notice when there's more space on the bottom there, some of the atomizer sticks out the top. Because you're making it longer. Now, the maximum amount of space you can have there is the point at which the atomizer no longer fires. And again, you have to be careful about adjusting it because it's very easy for that to slip up. Now, I did have a little leakage when I first used it, and it seemed to be coming out that bottom O-ring on the bottom cap just out of the sides of the tank itself. Um, I guess I must have messed it up when I was adjusting and kind of funky with the seal there a little bit but it's not doing that anymore you are not getting air from the air holes in that bottom connector you're getting it through that hole in the bottom cap there the one I have my finger over and you can manually feed it by holding your finger over that hole sucking in through the drip tip and then taking your finger off and it will force a little manual feed And again, you can see that there's just a very tiny space there where juice can go. But if you were, had your finger over that hole, you would sort of force it to go in. And then as you turn the bottom cap counterclockwise, you're making more space. So, now that we've been through all that, and again, it would be the same for the longer atomizer and the longer tank. Let's go ahead and take it off. Now, when you're filling it, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to take that bottom cap off. When you first set it up, you're going to push the atomizer into the top cap, get it flush, set it down. Now we're going to get some juice. Um, we're going to fill it to about where the atomizer starts to go in, not over those little air holes in the connector, because you have to leave enough room in the tank to accommodate the bottom cap. Then you kind of gently push the bottom cap down and start screwing it clockwise. And it will, the connector on the inside of the bottom cap will connect with the connector on the atomizer and it will begin tightening down. Once you have it all the way in, you can go ahead and put your drip tip on. Which apparently I'm not very good at today. 
I did pick one that's rather tight so I can kind of hold the atomizer still and it makes it easier to adjust. But again, see that came away a little bit. I had to push the top cap down again to make it tight. You want to make sure that stays tight. If those stay tight, it really doesn't leak at all. Well, I guess unless you fed too much juice into it, it would come out that hole in the bottom cap. Now I'm holding the drip tip pushing up on the tank so that it doesn't come separate from the bottom cap and I'm making a little more of a gap on the bottom there so I have a little more space between the bottom ledge of the atomizer and we're ready to go so that's my look at the amp tanks um, I like them to me they don't seem to be any more or less fiddly than a cardamizer tank where I, you know, sometimes have to adjust where the hole is and push the tank up and down on it, or I've punched too big or too many holes and it's flooding, or um, I have to suck without pushing to get some juice into the cardo. This doesn't seem to be a lot different. Actually, it seems to be a little more stable because you, you don't have to worry about any kind of hole you're punching in the atomizer at all. All you have to do is worry about the... Uh, how much of a gap there is between the the atomizer being completely screwed down onto the base cap or you know how loose it is and if that's not working right you can always put your finger over that hole and give it a little manual feed um, either of those things seem to be working great now at first I was having a little trouble with it until I used that little um, tool that I showed you when I drilled out the hole and it didn't seem to be making the hole I mean to my eye it wasn't noticeably bigger I mean my eyes can't tell the difference but it was apparently enough to make it feed better um, and at this point it's feeding great you know maybe once in a while I'll take a pull without firing it and they'll get a little more juice in there or I'll do a manual feed on it um, but since I started drilling that um, those air holes on the atomizer are a little bigger. I haven't had to worry about that. Now, I don't use a lot of atomizers because I hate dripping. I was using them on bottom feeders, but the problem with the bottom feeders is, you know, if you're like me and you over drip, I mean, I can drip enough to make a drip shield, make a mess. I, I'm horrible at dripping. So this kind of gets rid of that. <laughs> Which is great, you know, it doesn't leak in my pocket. If it tips over in my purse, it's not gonna leak anywhere. It's um, as convenient as a cardo tank, only you get the, the greater flavor of an atomizer. And it's not an atomizer you need to recoil or redo or punch holes in, like certain other attempted atomizer tanks like I mentioned and failed horribly. Um, it actually works pretty good. Now, if you don't like fiddling with cardo tanks, um, I mean, there's a little learning curve to it. Um, I probably came to it faster because I kind of had the same learning curve with the UFS. Um, although the UFS doesn't have much of a way to manually feed it. I really haven't had a lot of flooding trouble. Um, I did have a leak the first night and it was coming right out of the seam between the glass and the bottom cap. Um, but since I've refilled it since then, um, and have continued to make sure that, that I'm not letting those, the tank and the caps come loose at all when I'm adjusting the airflow and the atomizer is moving up and down and making the tank kind of, it has a tendency to like push the tank and make it taller when you're sending the atomizer up to, to get a greater distance in there. As long as you keep a close eye on making sure those, the caps and the tank are pushed down pushed together really well. It hasn't leaked at all. Um, so it's brought some new life to juices that just don't work well for me in, a, in an atomizer tank. So. so I got this one from someone who ordered two and didn't like them because I missed the first order. And then when the second order came in, I went ahead and got one with a uh, HH357 which works great.
clouds and that one I actually probably opened a little too far because there was that little gurgle I always get gurgle that'll go away in a second um, if you feed it too much um, the juice will come out that manual feed hole um, Apparently, I just did flood that one, so it's not perfect. There's a little learning curve, but uh, it's probably the best, most economical use uh, design for an atomizer tank that I've seen. I actually think it's, um, it may not be as sophisticated as a UFS, but then it doesn't have as many parts, so it's actually not as fiddly. Um, there's not as many things you can have in the wrong place and the wrong way. You don't have to worry about messing up the threads on the the plastic tank on the UFS. So, um, kudos for a nice design and actually giving me a use for all those atomizers that have been sitting in my toolbox there for like a year or so, completely unused. Um, I think they'll be seeing a little more use. So, the amp tank from avidvapor.com. If you are a atomizer user and like me hate dripping, this may be something great for you. I've seen a lot of regular drippers who've given it a try and yeah, you know, it's gonna be more fiddly than just putting a couple of drops in the atomizer if that's what you're used to. So if you're a dripper, it may not have the same appeal. If you're a cardio tank user who, you know, misses the flavor differential from an atomizer, um, then it might be great for you. So, my two cents, your miles may vary. Thanks for watching.